Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Toon Dollars. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. If you're interested in looking at Philadelphia hood tours, check out my Philadelphia hood tour playlist with over 230 hood tours. Today, we're gonna focus on our segment where we take a look at a different rapper's neighborhood and the environment that they grew up in. We're making a right on 2nd and Lehigh Avenue. The neighborhood we are currently visiting is that of AO215. First things first, I wanna congratulate this young brother at making it out the hood. This is his neighborhood. This is the north side of Philadelphia. We're located on the north side of City Hall. This is considered the West Kensington neighborhood. We're currently driving down 2nd Street. We're driving down the 2500 block of 2nd Street. AO215 is a hip hop artist and reggaeton. He raps a little bit of Spanish as well. We're on 2nd and Cumberland. 2nd and Cumberland. Yeah, me and him happen to have grew up in the same neighborhood. So I can talk about this neighborhood and give you guys a heads up at what it was like. Currently, we're doing this tour early in the daytime, but it really doesn't matter because this neighborhood isn't really as active with drug activity anymore. It's being heavily gentrified. We're on the 2400 block of 2nd Street. On my right-hand side, we just passed Engine 2. Engine Ladder 2. It's a fire station. We're driving by 2nd and York. 2nd and York. On the right-hand side, I know AO had a homie that used to run a business right here. Actually, that was Sansa Luz tent shop too, next to his homie spot where I got jammed up back in the day when I was a youngster. I got caught slacking and the tent shop got ran up on and I was one of the victims, unfortunately. We're on second and Dolphin. We're making a left on the 2300 block of Palethorpe Street. Palethorpe and Dolphin. I'm not gonna give his exact address, but this is his block. This is his block. I knew him and I knew his two siblings. I knew both his brothers. And this is the neighborhood that they grew up in. So this is the block that he resided on. On the left-hand side, we got like a little uh, garage that we just passed. Shout out to my homie Hose that lives over here too. Shout out to Hose, Hose Money. But this is his block. Now, I don't know where he lived at or if he lived anywhere else before here, but I know this is definitely his block. I'm not gonna give his address though. Don't want to give any whereabouts of where anybody stays at. Now we're crossing over York. We're still on Palethorpe. On my right hand side, you'll see some empty lots that are being gentrified currently. As you can see by the big buildings they're building, you see those homes? On the left hand side, shout out to the homie Bark. That's a mural piece done by Bark. On the right hand side, you see a church. Currently it's a Pentecostal church. But back in the day, to my knowledge, it was once a Jewish school. And then for a short period of time after it was a Jewish school, they ended up turning it into, it was like a used appliance spot where you would buy used appliances. And then the new owners took over and made it into a Pentecostal church. So we are on Palethorpe and this is Cumberland, right? Cumberland? Yeah, we're on Cumberland. On my right hand side, you see that mural? That's another bark. Um, artwork. Bark is really dope with it. Bark is a Philadelphia graffiti artist. There's a two story uh, block, but as you can see, we got two, three stories on my left hand side. Shout out to my homie Steve. Shout out to my homie Tone. This Tone's block. Rest in peace, Georgie. Georgie passed away. Rest in peace, Serge. Somebody that we knew, well, somebody that I know, I knew, uh, Serge got killed here probably less than, less than a year ago. It was probably like three, four months ago, five, five months ago, he got killed on my right-hand side. We're on Palethorpe and Huntington. That's his memorial on my right-hand side. You see where that orange cone is at? It says Lopez, there's a box with candles. That's a memorial. That's that's what they do in the hood. Like when you're from the hood, if something happens to you, your people will honor you with a small memorial. Shout out to Lou Rock, 
my homie Lou Rock and gang. This is the 19133 section of the city, primarily uh, Latin Americans. Hence, AO215 coming from this neighborhood. To my knowledge, I believe he is Dominican and Puerto Rican descent. I could be wrong, but I do know he does have a Dominican bloodline. Hence why he's able to be versatile and rap in English as well as rap in Spanish. Now, if you guys don't know about him, we're on the 2700 block of Hancock. We're gonna make a right down masher and we'll continue talking, right? So I didn't really follow his whole career. Most recently when I was culminating a list of you know Philadelphia artists, both young and old, both Hispanic and African-American and Caucasian, he's definitely one of the Hispanic gentlemen that I gotta talk about that come from Philly because you know, not not only was was he in the hood and in the streets that like he was really, you know, living the stuff that he was rapping about, but he's of Latino descent and there's not many people who are Hispanic that are, you know, doing something in the music business. And as of 2018, December, what Google told me, because I didn't know anything of this, he was off my radar for probably a year and a half, two, two years. I didn't know anything, you know, what was popping off with him. I didn't really fo follow up on it, but to my knowledge, he got signed to Rock Nation in 2018. So he currently has a deal with a record label. So congratulations, sir. You made it, you know? We're on Masher and Huntington. Masher and Huntingdon. It's called Huntingdon, but I'm telling you, I'm from this hood and I say Huntington. <laughs> on the left-hand side, we passed a little window spot. I should have talked about it a little bit more. Maybe we'll pass it later. On the left side, you'll see new homes. You're gonna notice that. You're gonna see a pattern of new homes being dropped in into the lots. On my right hand side, we have El Palito Bar that's been there for ages. It had a few different owners, but it's been there for a while. It's like a little mom and pop bar on Masher and Cumberland. We're on the 2400 block of Masher. On the left hand side, we got New Kingdom Baptist Church. And we have some construction being done on my right. You see how they're laying the foundation see the land the foundation on my left hand side you'll see that there's buildings already complete that's been dropped in between the homes that's been here for 100 plus years look at my right brand new homes brand new homes okay we're currently on masher and york masher and york street doing a lot of gentrification here these homes on my left hand side were probably made like 25 years ago it was affordable housing for low income families. You had to make over a certain median or certain um, level in order to qualify. And that little teeny garage on my left hand side, back in the day, there used to be some dude who used to be real good with interiors and vinyl work. On my right hand side, we have another church, the Church of God. This is Dolphin Street. This is one of the streets that young AO215 grew up on. I'm gonna take you to the trap corner in a little bit. On my left-hand side, we got Hunter Elementary School. Hunter Elementary School. A funny story about that school, Hunter Elementary School is located right here in the 2200 block of Masher. They denied me when I tried to go to that school when I was in kindergarten. They said they didn't have enough space. I think that was a blessing in disguise because I don't know too many successful people who came from Hunter School, so. You know, I ended up having to go to another school that was, you know, several blocks away, but it's interesting that they denied me as a kindergartner. In front of us, we have Norris Square Park, established in 1857. It's on Susquehanna Avenue. On my right-hand side, we have the original Norris Square Civic Association Center. Now it's a new building. Back in the day, it was a funeral home. On my left-hand side, this community was primarily a German community back in the early 1900s, late 1800s. We're going down Hancock. This is Hancock and Susquehanna, 2200 block of Hancock. Primarily a three-story neighborhood. This is the 19133 area. This is the block where he used to hang out at. Even though he was from around the corner, he used to hang out here with his homies back in the day. Not only did he used to hang out here with his homies, but he also used to trap back here in the day um, and get money. 
I can verify because I remember back in the day, this is, this, this is the corner store right here. Boom. This is where all the action used to pop off at. Now, mind you, he was probably like the fourth generation of Trapper out here. This is Hancock and Dolphin. Go ahead, lady. You could tell she's going to church because she got the skirt and the boots and all that. That's how the Pentecostals dress. So let's make a quick right here just so that you guys can see the trap corner. This is Hancock and Dolphin. Uh, an old school squad was from back in the day here. It was um, DSP, Dolphin Street Posse. Back in the day, in the late 80s, there was you know a generation of trappers. And then in the 90s, another generation of trappers. And then in the 2000s, early 2000s, I believe he was a part of that generation. So he was probably like the third generation that trapped out there. When I say trap, I mean distributed product. Um, he was out there in his teens. He was out there like 15, 16, and he was selling work. Um, how I can verify is he bought a car off my pop back in the day when my pop was doing his thing. And my pop had several cars on the block. He bought a, a vehicle off my pop and he dropped, you know, he dropped the bag on it as a down payment. And he said, yo, give me like two weeks until I, you know, get, get the rest. And in two weeks, he got the rest of the bread and he paid out, you know, the final price of the car, whatever was owed on the balance. He then took it to get painted, threw a little black paint job on it. He copped up some rims, some little 20 inch rims. He put some EVs, a little system in it, tinted it out jet black. And he was like 15 years old. You know what I mean? 15, 16 driving the neighborhood without a license, but you know what I mean? Doing his thing. This is one of the corners. He don't, he don't chill on here as often because you know, when you do big things, you can't be in the neighborhood, but this is one of the corners he used to hang out at and trap and chill. He still got homies here. He actually shot a music video here. Ironically, on my left-hand side and on my right-hand side, one of my lifelong friends, the one that just passed away, director Scott Dallas, he was actually one of the first ones to shoot his music video. Yep. How ironic, right? Yeah, my homie that passed away one month before he got signed to Rock Nation. One month. That was the most like surreal, eerie, thing that I, that I took out of. I was like, dang, man, my homie would have been happy. We're in the 2300 block of this should be, let me double check. I don't want to say a wrong name. Let me wait till we get to the corner. Yeah, but I know my homie Walt would have been real happy for him. I know he would have been real happy because he was happy just to work with him. And he used to, you know, come and chill with me and tell me, you know, like all his aspirations and how he desired to you know, continue working with this young artist. And, you know, since my homie's not here to be happy for him, I gotta be happy, you know, because I know anybody that makes it from this hood, this is Mudder. I'm sorry, guys. I wasn't even telling you the address. We're the 2400 block of Mudder. See all these abandoned lots on my left and my right? Now, even though he didn't chill out here, it's not like he chilled out in every single one of these blocks I'm showing you. I'm taking you through the, the little, you know, two mile square, vicinity or area or perimeter so that you guys can actually get a feel like the neighborhoods he had to drive in he had to drive out i promise you that he drove up and down these streets and you know still occasionally if he comes to this hood i'm sure he still drives through these streets you know what i mean so but yeah man my homie was the one who shot his first music video he even inquired to me um oh look at my left hand side more homes you see how they're building homes these big lots on my left will absolutely be taken over within a couple years. This factory right here in front of us, when it was like 2005, 2004, when I was a youngster, you see how it's abandoned? We threw a little club in there. It was called Club Ice. Why it was called Club Ice? Because we didn't have no heating. It was an abandoned factory and we had a bunch of teens, probably like 30 teens who would come in. We would like throw like little get togethers, like on a Friday, Saturday night, everybody would get wasted pitch dark somebody brought in a boom box and we called it like a little club it was called club ice it got shut down real quick after several meets once the neighbors realized what we were doing they shut it down but yeah that's an interesting story there little ghetto hood, hood club club ice because it was cool we was all in, in there with hoodies and jackets and yeah probably shouldn't have been in there but we're on Huntington and mutter let's cross over so yeah so homie reached out to me you know what i mean and he reached out to me um I provided some information based on my packages. I guess my packages weren't fitting his his budget. So I understand that. He then shortly after 
uh, reached out, I guess, to another content creator. And to my knowledge, from what his sibling told me, he ended up paying more than what I was charging, than my asking price. But no hard feelings. It's only, you know, business. It's about business. You know, people got to worry about their own well-being. So he ended up, you know, shooting more videos and, you know, doing pretty good for himself. At that time, I was already overbooked and overwhelmed and not really pressed on like working, you know, with anybody. So I didn't really think twice about it. I think my 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 boy Scott was more enthusiastic. This is the lighthouse on my right hand side. I think my boy Scott Dallas, well, I think he was more enthusiastic about it than, you know, me. So I was happy for him, man. And, you know, you got to be happy for the people that come from your hood because they face the same things that you face, you know, or that I faced, I should say. And he made it out, man. Was able to do something for his family and I, I know his peoples are proud, you know? Especially being of Dominican descent, you don't really see a lot of Dominican rappers. And he got his own sound, he got his own, shout out to E-Tunes. E-Tunes, I actually know his, one of his first producers. I don't know if he's still, produces his music. I don't know if he goes to e -Tunes studio no more, but I know e -Tunes also. All right, so we're back on Masher Street, but that's because I want to take you guys through some of the cracks and crevices, and sometimes you got to, like, go up a street twice in order to actually see something. So let me go over here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a left. We just passed Masher and Huntington. 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 <laughs> oh man, we just had that discussion with the Huntington Park tour that we recently shot. I was explaining how it's really called Hunting Park, but if you're from Philly, you normally call it Huntington Park. Yeah, crazy, right? Yeah, that Palito bar on my right hand side back in the day used to sell a lot of perico and like white powder and pills and all that back in the day. The old heads. We're making a left on Masher and Cumberland Street. On my left hand side, we got Waterloo Playground. It's a dead end, it's like a cutoff. On my right hand side, we got the Norris Square, again, affordable housing. They made these probably 11 years ago. They were retailing for about $140,000 each home. On my left hand side, you see that new building with the brick pointing, that was just made. That was literally a water ice factory for years. There was a little corner building that was a mom and pop shop and they used to sell water ice there. And you would go there to get buckets of water ice for $10 a bucket. And if you ran a little water ice business, that's where you would get your wholesale product. Okay, so we're on Front and Cumberland. That school we just passed on my right is Hunter Elementary School. Remember that old Hunter that I got denied from? They just moved the new building around the corner. A couple years later, they made a brand new building. Front and Cumberland. We're on Front and Cumberland passing Suzette Mini Market. I actually know who Suzette is. We went to the same high school. She was like a grade or two older than me. And now she's a business owner. Look at that. Passing Jose's Mini Market on the 2500 block of Lee Street. Now we're going to make a right. We're passing water. Somebody recently just got shot here. Shot in the head. It was like probably five, six months ago. Somebody was shot right there. Broad daylight. We're on Kensington and Cumberland. Right in front of me. You see that lime green building? That's called Brightside Academy. Um charter school like they do like child care in the basement and then i think they have like um some type of like middle to high schooling up top i don't know if they do k through 12 but i believe he went to that school when it was mariana bersetti when it was uh charter school that went, i think k through 12 i don't even know bro that dollar store they just made it it's on my left they made that that's been robbed like three times at gunpoint the dollar store we just passed recently got robbed like three weeks ago two weeks ago and then when all that pandemic stuff was happening, it was getting robbed. You see, they're making new lofts. They're making new buildings. They're dropping them in. They're dropping them like it's hot. The owner of this yellow building on my right, you see where all the washers and stuff is at? He actually owned this gigantic slot on my left-hand side on the 1800 block of Boston. You see it, Boston? If you were coming here back in the day, you used to see like a monkey standing here giving out flyers in like a suit. Well, not like a real monkey, but you used to see them giving out flyers. It was to a business that was right there, but he ended up selling the business. This person in front of us obviously didn't feel like waiting. He beeped and now he got played and played himself and stuck at a red light. And now he about to eat the red light. Nissan Xterra. He's in a rush to go somewhere. 
On my right hand side, we got Hunter Elementary School. This is the other side of Hunter Elementary School. This is Front Street, the intersection of Front and York, 2300 block of Front Street. Back in the day, this was like the shopping capital of West Kensington. If you wanted to buy any sneakers, clothes, jewelry, gear, this is the block you came to. Right there, that mobile um, building on the corner used to be a strip club. The Price is Right variety store, that man used to sell the best fireworks in the city when fireworks were illegal. My pop had a big con connect with him. We used to get like, whatever you want from him, you get sticks of dynamite, you get all types of stuff from him. On my left hand side was a pay less and a bunch of other businesses. They burned down, they closed down. This was the shopping mecca of this neighborhood. Four Sons Pizzeria used to be on my right. Olympia Sports, that pawn shop on my left has been there for ages. You go there, obviously the pawn items. On my right hand side, we got York Dolphin train station. Catch the blue line. We got a library. There was a little party building on my left hand side. I'm making an illegal U-turn. I actually know him. That was Benny. He used to be a boxer back in the 80s. The one that just made that U-turn. Now he's like a local security guard, security officer. But as you can see, they're knocking down these buildings left and right. I could get into more detail, but I got a lot of traffic behind me. So there's only so much that I can say within the time given. We got Fine Fair Supermarket on my right. That used to be an, an original Pet Boys. I believe like late 80s, early 90s. I don't recall it being a Pet Boys. I was too young but it was a pet boys <clears throat> on my left hand side we got chris no it's stelios piece i was about to say christina so that's around the corner that building right here on my left you see that corner building that's this is where they shot rocky right here where we're driving over right now is where rocky was shot the very first original historic rocky movie was shot on this block when they made the most recent rocky movie not the one with with his um um African, African American leading role dude Whatever that dude's name is Damn they shot another movie right here too They shot Shooters Right here The movie Shooters They shot it right here on this corner y'all They shot a scene here Anyway when they um, released that most recent Rocky movie We're on the 2000 block of Front Street As you can see New houses on my right New houses on my left These houses are going for 300, 400,000 plus we, we, we could get into Zip codes and all that And a little bit But let's keep going um, when they shot one of his most recent Rocky movies, I think there's like seven Rocky movies total. On my left hand side, we got ice cream parlor, thrift store. Yeah, we got a church on my right hand side. We got Kensington uh, football field on my left hand side for Kensington Performance Arts High School. There's also a high school on my left hand side. We're gonna make a right on Burke's side, front and Burke's. I think Rocky had like five, six movies total, right? Dang, look at that gigantic building they're making on my left. That wasn't there. Wow. So I think he got like five, six movies total. And out of the five, six movies total that he had, I think not the last one, not the one second before last. No, I think it was the one second before last. I actually watched as a young adult, watched them shoot that movie. Like when they did the comeback, when Rocky first started coming back, I watched them as an adult shoot that film out there they had the camera cranes they had everything they had the block shut down and we were behind the scenes watching which is pretty cool you know what i mean look at this rusty building on my right i've i've spoken about this several times of how they'll go and design a building and then they're like stylizing in a real funky way that whole building is rusted all the metal facade all the metal front is purposely rusted because they wanted to have that that look you know what i mean on my left hand side, we got some affordable housing. We're going to come back to Norris because he also got some roots here in Norris. He used to trap back here too. Um, but we're gonna go straight just so we can cover some of the area and then we'll pop back up on Norris. So you see, gentrified. This area is getting gentrified heavy. That's why I wasn't really pressed on coming out here in the daytime because it's not gonna make much of a difference. I mean, you'll see some residents but you won't see no like young brothers out here trapping as much like most of them they got booked i mean sad to say they got killed um they moved out the neighborhood yeah look at this dog on my right it doesn't have a right paw oh he's hopping that sucks you imagine having three legs and you just gotta hop everywhere new homes they're dropping them like it's hot they're dropping them like it's hot guys new homes everywhere now we're on hope street that's the block we're on hope street 
We just left the 2400 block of, no, we actually just left the 1900 block of Hope Street. No, it's the 19, no, we're on the 2000. Now we're on the 2100 block of Hope Street, right here, boom. Sorry guys, 2100 Hope. Yeah, this is the block, um, the one we just passed, Hope and Diamond, where they shot shooters, the movie shooters. They captured a scene or two out there. On the left-hand side, we got a senior citizen center. That's what you're looking at. You're looking at the back of the senior citizen center, primarily for Spanish um, seniors. You got some old homes, you got some new homes. Look at that second story, little deck up there that's gated in. Right here, coming up, you got one of the best muffler shops in the city. My left-hand side, I actually know the OG. He's been in this neighborhood for ages. I know his family too. He's a real good dude. Always, you know, does quality work. Charges me reasonable prices and he's really popular. Whenever you want to get a muffler done, you got to come to this block and get your muffler done. This is the 2200 block of Hope Street. All these houses are new. Left and right side, brand new, brand new, brand new. Huge pothole in the street. 2200 block of Hope Street. This block hasn't had homes in it, dudes and, and gents and ladies and gentlemen, this block hasn't had whole, um, holes. Houses for like 30 years, yo. Like seriously, this whole block was deserted. And now look it. On the left and on the right side, boom. Back to back, they dropping them everywhere. This is a library on my right hand side. A library. Free library of Philadelphia on my left hand side. We got Cantiflas Bar and Taco Place. It's pretty popular among the community residents. I've never been in there, but I know it's always popping. You always drive by, and it's always you know people out there. We're driving up Hope Street. Now we're on the 2300 block of Hope Street. And on the left hand side, we see the back of the North Square homes. These are the homes that I was talking to you about. They went from about 110,000 to about 150,000. You got a little back, you know, driveway. You got a little front lawn. They got the A top roofs. This is Hunter Elementary School, located on Hope in York. I believe this goes kindergarten through eighth grade. It's located on the 2400 block of Howard Street. Let me take you guys, no, let me take you around. Like I said, this neighborhood's kind of tricky because if I want to show you everything within a good amount of time, I got to be wise on where I make my turns. We're passing Waterloo Street. Passing Waterloo. We're on Waterloo and York. Masher. We're on York and Masher. Masher and York. We're going to cross over. Ouch. Potholes come out of nowhere, guys. And then the bad thing about them building homes everywhere is the people who are building the homes make the potholes. And then they don't fill them up correctly when they leave the neighborhood. They leave the residents with, with the damage, you know? We're on Hancock and York. On my left-hand side, you guys can't see her. But there's a, a girl that I went to second and third grade with laying on the floor. She's laying under some covers. She's out there in the cold. I gave her, one time I walked by here, I gave her 10 bucks straight out of my pocket. I felt bad because I knew I talked to her. I said, yo, me and you went to second grade together. She looked a little shy and timid, but she's right behind this, this blue van. I hope, like, I would love to get out. See, see, you see that, that little red blanket? She's laying on the cement. And I really wanted to, like, help her. Like, I've been driving by the last couple of days trying to figure out, like, how can I bring it upon her? Like, yo, Ruth, like, can... Do you mind if I capture some footage and try to hear your story? Maybe people out there can possibly help you. Maybe we can get together a little five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar, you know, fundraiser. So maybe you can get back on your feet. Maybe you can get an apartment. Maybe you can, you know what I mean? Try to motivate her. But I don't know what she's going through. I don't know if it's like mental, you know, depression or if it's something that happened to her. Did she lose her parents? You know, because usually sometimes when people are out there in the streets, you don't know what they go through. You know what I mean? So it's like. You, you can't judge them, but on the same note, you can't force them to want help because sometimes, you know, we can give her help and if she don't genuinely want help, she's not going to, you know, you can put her in an apartment for six months, but if she's not going to follow through, yo, that, that dealership on my left-hand side, y'all, that's why I bought Ugly Betty over like 13 years ago, y'all. Like, that's where I bought Ugly Betty at. Yep. 
That was the little used dealership I bought my hoopty from. All right, we're back on Second and Dolphin. This is the trap spot that I was talking about that he grinded at back in the Dizzy. Hancock and Dolphin was the main block that he repped. He stood out here with the gang. There'll be like 15, you know, teens, kids deep. Um, he was the younger generation than me, so he's not the same age as me. He was, you know, a couple years younger. But like I said, I knew his brothers, which were probably pretty much of age, if not my age, probably the same age. I think his oldest brother is about my age. But that corner that we just passed, that was, that was the spot for him. That's like where it all happened and probably where it all started for him. And I know these aren't the only neighborhoods that he trapped at because I know he used to hang around 11th Street projects and, you know, he used to get busy. Like, he used to do his thing and he had connects, you know. He he got people that know people that know people, you know what I mean? And, yeah. Some of the people that he's most recently affiliated with, I was capturing them on, on footage 10, 11 years ago before they blew up. Like, for example, Boogie, Triple M Boogie, like, I knew him for mad years. And that's Ayo's homie. You know, Brap, you know, Brap was on my camera first when he was 15 years old, when he was just a kid before Brap reached the fame and the notoriety. He was on one of my episodes. So I tend to know a lot of people. I guess that's why I don't get starstruck because I know mad people. Like I can name 15 people easily that I've crossed paths with, no, on a regular basis. And they're doing really good for themselves right now. And you know, I can't be happier for, for them to, to see somebody from my hood, from my city, become successful that's what you want i want to hear more success stories come out of philadelphia especially north philadelphia like i'm all with you know west philly and south philly and all that like i love all parts of philly the same but i guess being from the north side it just feels good you know what i mean we're on second susquehanna somebody just died here i actually captured a video here recently and yo you see that um let's let's reverse a little bit just so y'all can peep game you see this little food and lottery place right here on the corner the bus hit that place like three times in my lifetime. The SEPTA bus ran into that spot like three times in my lifetime. That dude gotta have a heavy insurance policy be, because <laughs> it's a corner that stayed getting hit. They went right through his business. But yeah, so um, that corner we passed too, when they were doing the looting and blowing up ATM machines, spoiler down speed shop on my left, and you get windows on my right, father and son's window auto glass on my right. But when it was blowing open ATMs, some dude died out there. Like he, I guess it, it went wrong. He blew it up and he died next to the ATM. They, they found him. And I remember I was like, what? Like, yo, like that's that's my spot. But right on that same corner, you had Little Rock pass away. I can literally drive through the neighborhoods. I didn't name all the people that passed away. Through every block we drove through, I can name a person or two, even within the vicinity or, or the perimeter, the three block perimeter that we just came from nine people pass away easily including my family i didn't even mention that on my right hand side we got north square civic association it's a nonprofit organization for the city on my right hand side these new homes were just built here there was a gigantic uh catholic church here and it was like a rectory and it was all of that and it had an underground connection and everything north square took over it um knocked it down and then they made these homes these homes are starting at three hundred thousand dollars and up i believe most of them are sold but yes we're on masher and diamond street that's kensington hospital in front of us you go there for dentistry work you go there for medical appointments honestly i only know them for dentistry work but you can probably get other stuff done again you see that that bur that building with like the cobblestone that's one of the old pieces of St. Boniface Church. That was St. Boniface School. Now, North Square still owns that, and they turned it into a child care center, like, you know, pre-K to, like, I think, like, first grade or something. And occasionally, they'll rent out the basement as hall space for meetings. And at one point, they had a high school program up top called IPS, Intensive Prevention Care Services for Troubled Youth, 17, 18, 19 years old, et cetera, et cetera. My left hand side, we got North Square Children's Center. Shout out to Oban. Oban is from this neighborhood. He's a Philadelphia graffiti artist, really dope gra graffiti artist. You can see on my right hand side, O B A N in purple and lime green. He's sharp with it, and that's my young boy. And he was one of my students. <laughs> I used to actually have him in class when he was a young boy. And I called him graffiti and before in the bathroom, but I ain't never read on him because I already knew what it was hitting for. Even, even though I should have, you know, that was my employment. Nah, dog, go and do your thing. Put, put that marker away and keep it pushing, young brother. This is another corner. This is another corner he trapped at. 
Masher and Norris. Not only did he trap at, he had homies out, out here. Like, you know, this this was his, like, spot. Like, you know, you, you gravitate towards different, you know, corners and different hoods. And this was one of the corners where he made his bread at. Um, this corner... It's so they, they they sold a little crack, you know, they sold a little, you know, dope, whatever, but you know, weed too, you know, you was able to get marijuana and pot and, and stuff out here, you know what I mean? But I don't even think that was his business. I think his business was was hard. His business was not his business was a hard business to run, but what he used to distribute was hard. There's Christina's Pizza on my left hand side. That was the spot back in the day. They've been here for a long, long, long time. This block right here is getting hit heavy with gentrification. There was a gigantic garage on my right hand side. That big vacant lot was once a garage. On my left hand side, this is the third handball court, the professional handball court they made in Philadelphia. Philadelphia never had handball courts until after the 2000s. I remember being a part of the first initiative, going to major meetings with Angel Cruz, Councilwoman um, Maria Quinone, with, with everybody. Like, and I, and I was a young youth standing up, speaking at these big committee meetings, trying to push a handball court in the neighborhood. Three or four years went by, nothing fell through. Shout out to Wally, which is the king of Philly and, I mean, king of handball in Philly. Wally, he and his crew uh, pushed, you know, after I, you know, disassociated myself with handball. Even though I'm sharp, I'm still real good in the sport, but they pushed to get those handball courts made. And this is the third one. I was talking about this the other day that all the handball courts, except Huntington Park one, is located on Masher. Masher and Allegheny. Masher and Lehigh, and this is Masher and Burks. We're passing Wilt Street on my right hand side. This is the 19122 area code. We'll talk about area codes in about two minutes. This area right here has a lot of Arabs, Palestinians, Iranis, etc. etc. Whatever other nationality falls under the Muslim denomination, you see a lot of the females with the garments, you see a lot of the 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 fathers um you know working that's usually how they do it like they provide they run the ice cream trucks they run pizza delivery you know they tend to run their own businesses so let's go straight let's go straight for y'all we're gonna cap it off at around Mon montgomery because i don't want to go too far because even though he did drive through these neighborhoods this isn't really like where he chilled at so palmer street 199 palmer street on my right hand side On the 1700 block of Masher Street. We're on Cecil B. Moore Avenue, Masher and Cecil B. Moore. On my left hand side, we used to be able to make lefts. I guess with all the gentrification, they just stopped it. So now it says do not enter. I came here under the impression of thinking I could still make a left, but I can't. So I'm gonna have to go around the block, guys. It's an elementary school in front of us. On my right hand side, it was once a factory, right? You see that big corner um, brick style building? Now it's called masher studios that's what they're doing with a lot i mean a lot of these factories and these warehouses are getting turned into studios and then they charge buku top dollar for let's let's go up one more block guys because i don't want to show you guys the little horse stable that's around here and then we'll we'll get back to norris area which is his other trap spot which pretty much like the early trap spots. I don't know where he trapped that as an adult, but I know those, those were his younger years and where he started at. Oxford and Masher. This whole block on my left was just invented. <laughs> and I'm not being um, sarcastic. I'm, I'm like, they just dropped this here. Like they literally just dropped all this here. Obviously the architecture is just designed it. You can see the type of stylization that's in the brick pointing. Look, they use like dark blue bricks. And on the right, we have some pretty red brick new homes. You see? See how they mix up the area? Spencer Industries on my right. Another little loft that was rehabilitated and brought back to life. 19122 area. So let's talk about the zip codes. This is Hancock and Jefferson Playground. Hancock and Jefferson Park on my left hand side. We're turning up Masher and Jefferson and now we're turning on right and Jefferson. You see these homes? Boom. Brand new homes on my right. You see this church on my left? I got an awesome drone shot of that. A couple years ago, it's on my channel. You probably gotta look for it, but I actually rotated around that giant cross up top of the church on my left. Epic shot, epic shot. But you see these new homes? These new homes right here are going for half a million. 
they're going for half a million bucks. 350, 400, close to half a million bucks. There's some of the black that are confirmed. The, the pricing out front said 500,000 and up. Look at this rusted home on my right. You see that rusted home with the little pumpkin? He got like a pumpkin on top of his mailbox, 1527. This is Hancock Street. On my left, we got a new little um, spackle front on the church. What do you call it? Spackle? What do you, what do you call that when somebody does the front with cement? I don't know the correct term, but yeah. So let's go forward so I can show you the little, the little horse stable. This horse stable, they just made it probably like, let me see if I don't over exaggerate. They probably brought this horse stable here like 11 years ago, 10 years ago, nine, I don't know, right here on Turner, on Hancock and Turner. You see how there's a little stable? There's some horses out there. See them? The dude pushing hay and all of that stuff. And then you got these little carriages. Now I'm not all for, see, you see the horse? Looks so cool, white horses and all that. I'm not for that because I believe it's like animal cruelty. That's a whole different story, you know, making money off of them and, and pushing them to have have them carry around people. I don't think that's cool, but that's my personal opinion. This is Hancock and Cecil B. Moore. Stateside Urban Craft Vodka. That that building on my left was an abandoned factory, right? They didn't make it into lofts, but they made it into a, like a wine brewery, like a distribution center for like vodka and all that stuff. As well, if you go around the side, there's like a little mini like um, relaxation area with hookah and bowling, I believe, and all that. It's like a bar. These homes right here on my left-hand side, confirmed. $500,000 in the 19122 area code. This is it right here. You see them burgundy ones? I should say burgundy, but they're like red color bricks. $500,000, ladies and gentlemen. But these peach houses on my right hand side were made 25 years ago. Those sold for probably 80,000, 100,000, roughly. Due to the economy and the times that we were in. We were in the early 2000s when they made those houses. They probably even made them in the late 90s, right? Boom, fast forward to 2020, we selling houses right across the street for 500,000. Look at this house right here with the little triangular um, angle and you see the roof, it got a rooftop deck. That's another amenity that all the new residents want. They want rooftop decks. Everybody who makes a new home nowadays want rooftop decks. We got Montgomery and Hancock. This building on my left hand side was once an abandoned little tiny garage, one story. You see how now they got a little double, they got a double deck. They got a little triangle P, P rooftop. They got some metal um, siding. It's all beautiful, painted white and gray with new windows. Somebody just bought that garage recently, probably within the last three years, because that was just done. They made a little drive-through garage, did the windows. They made a second floor. They hooked it up, and now they're living in it. This block, again, has a lot of Arabs, Palestinians, people from Iran, people from all those countries from, from probably Jordan, on my right. All these houses right here, a lot of them are, are from other countries. We're passing the 1700 block of Tillman. Now we're passing Hancock and Wilt. These houses on my left-hand side were also just made. This was an empty lot. And if you go a little bit more up on the corner, it was a used car dealership. The car dealership, I guess, sold out. Business was slow, like four or five years ago. Maybe, yeah, four or five years ago, they sold out. There's a factory on my right. Again, it's knocked down. Over there on my far right, you see wood framework. That was all garages, all bought out, knocked down. There's guys up there right now as we speak on a Saturday working, doing the construction. These houses on my left that I was talking about that they brand new, they built right over this dealership. Again, 400,000. All right, Hancock and Burks. So we're in the 19122. What's the difference from 19122 to 19133? I'm gonna tell you the difference and I'm gonna do, do even better. I'm gonna show you the difference. It's literally just one line perimeter. If you own houses on the 19133 area, those houses, if you're close to this side, they're more up at the 80,000 to 160,000 per home. Some, depending on the type of amenities and how new your home is and what type of stuff you got going on, they may go up to 180,000, you know? But when you cross over, we're passing Tui's Playground on my right, Water and Waterloo and Burks, right here. We're on Burks and we're gonna make a left on Howard and Burks. That's a little rec center on my right, basketball court rec center. 
more lofts in front of us on my right hand side very expensive lofts they'll charge 2500 per living quarters and then they got like 40 living quarters rosalinda beauty salon that's my family salon i believe she still owns it to this day because her name is still on it um see this block this is a really nice clean looking block it's two-story homes this is a relatively quiet block this is a couple homies that that used to be out here back in the day but for the most part it's a quiet block got some new feng shui homes on my right oh car enthusiasts y'all saw that little toyota corolla right that was nice on my left hand side these are new homes that was made like in 95 96 again part of like you know the low-income community affordable housing initiative where they would try to make homes for like the spanish community or people of you know low income this neighborhood the the director who ran the organization in this neighborhood she was really fond on empowering hispanics and she believed that hispanics should be educated she believed hispanics should be homeowners she believed his, hispanics should contribute back to their community so she was really fond on that and that's pretty much what happened i'm sorry y'all some that dude that was crossing the street i actually knew him shout out to lo mion <laughs> i'm the civic gang um passing mutter they, they used to sell chocolate um tie back on that block back in the day but um so we're on hancock and norris we're going to make our right right here and okay where was i i was at the zip codes so 19122 i'm about to take you right now that's where we're at we're at 19122 but we're at the borderline shout out to frankie on my left hand side address well, I ain't gonna put his address out, but shout out to the OG. His birthday the same day as mine, but he like 20 years older than me. But he had all the same interests growing up. He built like motorized vehicles and customized things. And we, all, we ironically, being born on the same day, but many years apart, we had a lot of the same interests. Go figure. All right, so I'm gonna take you to the borderline so you guys can see what's the difference. We're gonna pass this right here. We're going down Diamond Street. We're, we're, we're driving down the 100 block of Diamond Street where it shifts over to 200. CRV gang on my left hand side. You can find some Philadelphia police CCT security camera footage on their website or on their YouTube here on this corner. Somebody um, pulling up and robbing somebody, jumping out the car, robbing them and jumping back in the car. You see that pharmacy? They caught it all on camera. You see that Harbison big milk and ice cream spot right up front? Matter of fact, let's go up front because I can still show you the, the difference from 19122 to 19133 if I just go around the corner. You see that big building in front of us? It's called Harbison Dairies. I actually found one of those original dairy um, glass bottles, how they used to store dairy back in the early 1900s. They would drop off like, you know, 12 glass bottles of milk in front of your house. I found one of them on, on my property upon digging when I was laying foundation and everything. I found not one, but two of those, like four or five feet underground. I don't know if somebody stuck them underground as a time capsule, but I Googled them and looked them up. It, they're, they're bottles from like 1909, 1919 and all that. But that building right there, I loved it with a passion. I wanted it. They were selling it, but I don't have a couple million dollars to go put bread down on it. But on Dreer and Coral Street, as you can see, or Dreer, guess what? It's now leasing. You know why? Because they turn it into condos, little, you know, lofts, you know, art studios, and boom. Now I don't have an opportunity to buy it no more unless I win the lottery. <laughs> All right, so we're back on Front Street. This is the block where they shot the Rocky movie at. Remember I was talking about the Rocky movie? They shot Rocky on this block. Right here. This is where the whole bus scene, the pet shop was on my left-hand side. They knocked down the pet shop. I used to go to that pet shop when I was a kid. They still got boxing gloves painted on the right-hand side. You see it? You see in between both those gates, you see a pair of boxing gloves? This is his gym. That was the gym. So if you go watch the Rocky movie, this is the gym. This is everything. This is where it went, went down back in the day. Make a left here, past Fine Fair. We're on Susquehanna and Hope, going by the muffler spot. Best muffler spot in the city. All right, we're on Howard and Susquehanna. This is the borderline for 19122 on my left, 19133 on my right. The house is closest to my right in the little blocks. They'll sell for 80 to $180,000 just because they're close to the 19122. But once you go closer and closer to Lehigh, the price value goes down. 
60,000, 50,000. You cross over Lehigh, you get to Cambria and Indiana, 30,000, 35,000, because it's a more crime-filled neighborhood. You move to my left-hand side, it used to be my cousin's barbershop on the right-hand side, but it's closed. You move to my left-hand side, what you'll see is 19122, those houses start off at 200,000, 250, 300. The more blocks you go to the left, they go a higher to me. Remember when we were just talking about, you know, 400, $500,000 homes? Boom. And this line, this street right here, Susquehanna Avenue, which, which a bus runs on, I think it's the number three. I could be wrong. Ran on. This is the block that separates the two. On my right-hand side, Little Rock, which was a homie from the neighborhood, got shot and killed right there. I can literally just now go through the neighborhood and talk about everybody that passed and like different, like literally feet away from each other. If you look at one of my skits, I had did a little Mulashi 96 skit. And in the skit, I, you know, I kind of emphasized the joke of, um, you know, four homies getting killed next to each other. Like I walked feet and I said, um, Michelangelo. And then I said, Leonardo. And then I said, my homie Raphael. And, and, and I made a little joke about it. Like I made pun on how Mulashi lost people that was right next to each other. And they literally died feet away from each other because he's from the hood, right? That's based on a true story because on my block, and you can just pretty much say the block in the neighborhood that Ayo grew up on, you can easily count on, I would say both hands, easily a dozen people that got shot, whether they survived or whether they passed away. All right, dude, I'm sorry guys, I got so much information. You see that building right there with the painting? This corner building? It was once owned by a father and he had a son there working with him and the son killed his father for money. Yup. The father was probably in his 60s, 65s, he was in a wheelchair. You see this restaurant on my right, it's popular for bread. That used to be a funeral home. Now it's a very popular restaurant for Spanish food. Let's make a left here so y'all can see the park, North Square Park. That's the park that I grew up in as a kid. We used to play catch one, catch them all. We used to play tag, we used to play manhunt. We used to play all these games. These houses on my left, they're gigantic. They're huge. Some of them are apartments. One or two may occasionally be a home. Senator Tataglioni, or councilwoman, or whatever she is, this I don't want to put too much information on, but she's on my left-hand side. I, I know where she lives at. Um, yeah, these houses on my left, these are $300,000, $400,000 tall buildings, tall doors, tall ceilings, tall, tall windows. Um, on the left, we have another church. Um, back in the day, Reverend Gage used to run this church. He passed away. He was a major figure in the community. Now, Reverend Adan runs the church. On my right-hand side, that gigantic home on the corner, she's pretty much the head honcho of this community. She's a lawyer, an ex-lawyer. Um, she has many other accolades and, and accomplishments. And she <laughs> she's, you know has a history of being from Spain, but she's the one that I say that pushes um, you know, education amongst the minorities, she believes that, you know, you should give back to the community. So that's pretty much where that story comes from. And it leads us back to this block. This is the block where he used to be, you know, flipping, flipping. Like I ain't gonna put too much of his information out here. You know, this is all past tense. He's been booked on this corner. I'm sure of it. If he didn't get booked on this corner, I believe he got booked on Norris too. But back in the day, this, this was the spot. DSP stood for Dolphin Street Posse. And Hancock and Dolphin was one of the, you know, more well-known corners in the city. He shot one of his music videos right here on my left. That was the one that my homie shot. Um, you know, I, somebody got shot right here on my right-hand side next to that school, next to Hunter, the school that they didn't want to let me in. I have rumbled right here on my left-hand side next to this Delaney grocery store back when I was like 15, 16. Like, you know, there's mad stories that I got in this neighborhood. For real, for real, if we slow down, we'll probably see chickens crossing the street. Oh no, all the chickens are right there inside that lot on my right. But you normally drive through here and you'll see chickens crossing the street, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not kidding. Like, oh, I almost thought I saw the chicken. I was about to reverse, but seriously, you will see chickens crossing the street like you ever heard the joke like why did the chicken cross the road well because he lived in north philly like he just had to go to the other side like this true story 
On my left hand side, we got Olympia. Olympia Sports, we used to buy sneakers. Am I right? It's that library I was talking about. Let's, let's see, let me see where I can take you guys. Did I take you guys down Howard? Let me take you guys down Howard. Because in this neighborhood, um, especially my block growing up, we had a lot of boys. You know how some blocks, they don't got a lot of kids, a lot of teens. I was fortunate enough in my generation to grow up with like 20 homies, 20 friends on my block that were from my block. So I had a lot of friends growing up. I wasn't fortunate to have a lot of female friends on the block. It was like three girls. They all came from one family and they weren't interested in none of us. So, you know, that was kind of a bummer for us growing up. But it was just nothing but male friends, right? So our block had mad little homies. Two blocks away was another block that pretty much shared similar traits. They had mad homies, mad friends, another 15, 20 dudes, but they were located on the Howard side. So you had Hancock and Dolphin homies, and then you had Howard and Dolphin homies. It wasn't until our older years, till they started intermingling and politicking. Now you come to Hancock and Dolphin, you'll see some homies from Howard and Dolphin or vice versa. You know, they ended up, nowadays you come to Hancock and Dolphin, you see people from West Philly, you see people from, from Cambria. I've seen people from Cambria come chill on Hancock and Dolphin. I mean, you know, I guess when you get older, you make, you know, more friends and you network more. And that's, that's what happens, you know? But I'm gonna take you through, this is Howard and Susquehanna on my right hand side. Howard and Susquehanna 19133. Remember we talked about the Susquehanna borderline? All right, this corner store right here is good that we passed it. Um, when AO215 got signed, I literally just saw that video like a day or two ago. Um, this is the corner store that he used for one of the scenes when he was like working, when he was like pretending like he was working in the shop and then the bull, I guess he got tired. I actually know the owner and all, like the boy that was in, in the video. <clears throat> yeah, this is the corner store that he shot that music video in. So if you watch it, you'll actually see the corner store. Back in the day when I was a kid, when I was looking for a car to learn how to drive stick, there was an old 1987 Supra, Toyota Supra located on my right hand side with turbo. We test drive it, but to my knowledge, it really wasn't that, that good. It wasn't really worth it. So my pot wasn't gonna follow through with the purchase. And I ended up getting a 1985 Mazda RX-7 to learn how to drive stick shift at 13 years old. That was good times, good times. Um, on my left-hand side, we got brand new homes. This is the corner I was talking about. Dolphin and Howard had his own click and Hancock and Dolphin had his own click, but we were all connected by what? Dolphin Street. So, you know what I mean? Now, I think everybody's more peaceful. Everybody's more civ civilized. It's, it's not no like static, that, you know, we're all homies, you know, and if you ain't a homie, you know, usually 99% of the time in Philly, as long as you don't start no trouble, there won't be no trouble. Don't go walking around thinking you are an incredible superhero because, you know, ain't nobody invincible. So we're in the 2300 block of Howard Street. We're gonna see more of those North Square homes. You see those North Square homes? They look more like a suburban type of layout. But while wow, this person is having trouble, reversing or something <laughs> on my left hand side we got an alarm spot it's like you know auto repair but they do a you know alarm installation and stuff you got you got a schedule though you have scheduled appointment one time i went there and he told me they gotta wait like four days I'm like dude but i can't get an alarm like, right now no sir you gotta wait till this saturday like oh man forget that i don't need it but yeah these houses on my right and my left these are the ones that i was saying that were brand new they were these were built like in 2011 2010 2011 uh interesting story about the ones on my left the the construction company i believe got sued or, or or something of that nature because whoever was on job site and was doing leveling didn't like check things thoroughly so they approved they did a bunch of approvals but what happened was wow these blocks you see all these potholes that i'm driving through you see how it's all it's been like that since they built these houses 10 11 years ago they have not fixed this block yet so you got to go slowly but the houses, the reason why the developer got in trouble was because them homes, and once it rained or any type of wet weather, uh, like several of them were reporting liquid going in the basement. So they were actually, um, you know, going through, through water issues, like foundation issues. There you go. You know, water with foundation isn't good. William H. Hunter Elementary School on my right. And boom. We're now going to Howard, Howard and Cumberland. But 
I believe that will conclude today's tour. If we keep going up, you know, we got shout out the old band. We got Serge's old block. Um, we can continue talking about different people, different friends, different family, different stories from the neighborhood, but that'll just be redundant. That will conclude today's uh, tour, Philadelphia tour of a local rapper's neighborhood, the young Latino um, artist that's known by AO215, a Philadelphia native. Congratulations, sir. I wish you nothing but success. Everybody, if you're new to the channel, hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notification bell. Please share this video with at least one person. Comment, thumbs up, engage somehow and you will help this video be seen. All right, hope you guys have a good day. This is Tune, tuning out.